Hi everyone, Patrick here. Uh, today's video will be my first ever Why You Should Read a series section. And today I have decided to choose Miss Bond Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I think it's only fair and understandable that Miss Bond Trilogy shall be the first one that I talk about on this segment because Miss Bond, for those of you who don't know, even though I have talked about this so many times, Miss Bond is an extremely important series for me. It is quite likely the most important series for me. Without Miss Bourne, I don't think I would become the person that I am today. I'm going to try my best to tell you why you should read Miss Bourne Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson if you haven't done it. So, Miss Bourne Trilogy is one of the most popular series by Brandon Sanderson. It, it consists of Miss Bourne The Final Empire, and then The Well of Ascension, and then finally The Hero of Ages. And this video will be entirely spoiler free, so if you haven't read this trilogy, don't worry about it. As far as plotline goes, I will only be talking about the premise of the first book. So, The Final Empire is the first book in Brandon Sanderson's highly acclaimed Miss Bourne trilogy. For a thousand years, the world has been ruled with an iron fist by the immortal emperor, the Lord Ruler. The main plot of the book revolves around a rebellion to overthrow the Lord Ruler. This rebellion is built around a heist led by Kelsier, his group, and his newly found apprentice, Vin. I immensely enjoyed reading The Final Empire. The first time I read this book, I found the plot to be thoroughly engaging, relatable, and at times humorous due to the character's friendship and banter. And I was also completely fascinated by the world building and magic system that Sanderson has created here. On reread, all of this are still true. But there is a new additional superb quality being included. All of the foreshadowing and hints are now laid bare for me with the gift of hindsight. The Final Empire on its own worked perfectly as a standalone, but trust me, there is so much more to the story beyond this book. Everything you read in The Final Empire, even just the mini details, played major parts in the upcoming sequels. And then the second book, The Well of Ascension, is a relatively slower paced book compared to The Final Empire, but for me, personally, I never felt bored with it, not even for one page. I thought it was very addictive, it was incredibly compelling, and I think Brendan Sanderson did a great job with the second book to improve the quality of the trilogy. So here's the thing, when I first read uh, The Well of Ascension, I was so in love with it, I was so in love with The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, I was so in love with reading. And then, after a while, I found out that, turns out, a lot of people didn't like The Well of Ascension. I was so confused why, and not gonna lie, when I reread this book, I was afraid that, what if, what if The Well of Ascension didn't hold up as good as the first time I read through it? But apparently the result, I shouldn't have worried. The Well of Ascension, whether it's on the first read or the second read, was just brilliant and engaging to me. I think this just goes to show that my investment with the story, characters, and the world was just so strong and real that I don't feel that any part in The Well of Ascension is a filler. I never felt that way. So the storyline in The Well of Ascension revolves around the siege of Lutadel, and it is a very different kind of book uh, in comparison to The Final Empire which revolves around a rebellion and a heist. The Well of Ascension revolves mostly around politics and characters' development. Vin, Elan, Sazed, and everyone must deal with the political turmoil in Lutadel and stop the upcoming threats. I found The Well of Ascension to be a very intense political intrigue. I think uh, the mystery that Sanderson implemented into The Well of Ascension worked incredibly well to the storyline. As I said, I never once felt bored. Brandon Sanderson never lets up in making sure that the character's development and thoughts are in the right place before the final book. And this indeed means there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of contemplation with very minimum battle scenes. And just like Elon, I lost track of time when I was reading this trilogy. And that includes all the books, The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, or The Hero of Ages. All three of them, I lost track of time. I was just so immersed with it. <laughs> I won't deny that there were indeed some infamous middle book syndrome in The Well of Ascension, but this is just one of those rare cases where I don't mind. And for the first time readers of this book, they may not know it yet, but Well of Ascension served its purpose as a terrific bridge between the first book and the third book. With The Final Empire and The Well of Ascension, Sanderson has masterfully set the stage for the transcending conclusion, The Hero of Ages. And The Hero of Ages is my favorite of the trilogy. Let's just say that everything you've read in the previous two books, uh, The Final Empire and The Well of Ascension, has a role in the Hero of Ages. I personally think that Miss Bond trilogy really shined because of all the characters. Vin, by the end of this trilogy, still stands strong as one of my favorite heroines of all time. 
This, of course, doesn't mean that Vin, the main character, was the only great character from the series. Kelsier, the other main character, and then CZ, Elon, and many other characters were so memorable as well. Their developments throughout the entire trilogy were amazing. Ever since I first read this trilogy for the first time, I've heard from several readers that they found Vin to be incredibly emo and annoying. I have to disagree with this. Vin had a rough past. I think Sanderson did a great job in conveying Vin's insecurity and emotions. Her and the other character's thoughts felt believable to me, and I found their character's development to be gradually developed and genuine. Vin taught me that despite being betrayed and left behind countless times, it's always okay and better to love and trust someone again rather than being alone all the time. And then Kelsier taught me about the meaning of justice and hope. It is not okay to stand still in the face of tyranny, oppression, and slavery. Elon taught me that it is important to stand up for something, and Breeze taught me that it's okay to relax once in a while. Caesar taught me that the difference in faith can still lead towards cooperation and respect. There is just so much to learn from the characters in this trilogy. Although Sanderson's books can be considered a uh, relatively slow pace, but for me as a reader, I love reading slow pace books. I think in slower pace books, there is more room for characterizations and excellent character development, and that's what Sanderson delivered within this trilogy. The exploration of found family, leadership, faith, and everything, practically everything, was just magnificent to me. Lastly, this video won't be complete without talking about Sanderson's staple world building and magic system. The final empire introduced us to Alomancy and Ferukemi. Honestly speaking, coming from a gaming and manga or anime background, I thought I would never encounter a magic system as elaborate as the one often taught in these two mediums. But I was proven wrong completely. Alomancy is amazing, and it is still by far my favorite magic system in the entire fantasy genre. Yes. I think it's even better than the one shown in Sanderson's magnum opus, The Stormlight Archive, at least so far. The intricacy of the magic system that Sanderson has crafted in Visborn Saga never ceased to amaze me, and I've yet to encounter a more engaging, complex, and amazingly easy to understand magic system in any other fantasy novels. Plus, the action spawned from the magic system resulted in some intensely vivid and fast-paced battle sequences. Back when I first read the first book, I thought Alamancy wouldn't go beyond what I've read in The Final Empire, and I couldn't be more wrong again. Within each installment, Sanderson always expanded the intricacies of the magic system. The metal Duralumin was introduced in the Well of Ascension, and then there is more to come in the Hero of Ages. I haven't even talked about Mistborn the Second Era. For now, let's just say that some of the action sequences, because of the magic system, reminded me of the actions in Attack on Titan, which means it was bloody brilliant. This trilogy was also my first encounter with Sanderson's spectacular world building. Accompanied with Sanderson's accessible, vivid, and immersive prose, the world of Skadriel that's clouded by ash and surrounded by mist felt extremely atmospheric. There was also a lot of well-built mystery and lore within the entire trilogy. Sanderson used the epigraph at the beginning of each chapter so masterfully. Now, when it comes to Sanderson's books, uh, the most often criticism that I find uh, from other readers not me, is that uh, Sanderson's prose can be a bit too simplistic, and I will not deny this, it is true. Sanderson's prose is indeed very workmanlike. Sanderson has talked about this several times that he is a storyteller, he is not a literary writer, there is no flowery prose, there is no purplish prose, his prose is very straight to the point, but I think that's one of the things that I really love about Sanderson's prose. I can experience epic fantasy without feeling bogged down by the writing. Like for example, Malazan Book of the Fallen, this is a great example. Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson is one of my favorite series of all time. But reading that series can be very tiring. I felt exhausted. With Sanderson's books, I never felt like that. Yes, it can be emotionally draining sometimes due to the events that happen within his books, because Sanderson doesn't shy away from making readers cry. No, he doesn't. He can still be merciless towards his characters, especially in Mistborn Trilogy. Mistborn Trilogy, in my opinion, is the darkest series by Brandon Sanderson so far, and I loved it because of that still Inquisitor is one of the most terrifying villains that I've ever seen. I mean, just look at these eyes. And once you find out about how they're created, it's even more disturbing. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to say that, even though Sanderson's prose can be a bit too simple sometimes, it was never lacking in wisdom, in my opinion. All of Sanderson's book in the Cosmere universe, just like Miss Bond trilogy, contains a lot of relatable wisdom. 
in my opinion, that's very applicable to our life. I just love Miss Bond trilogy so much. I've read plenty of series that are, in my opinion, better than Miss Bond trilogy. But when it comes to the matter of importance, nothing, nothing will ever top this one for me. It is the series that sparked my love for reading fantasy novels. It is a series that feels like a comfort read to me. It feels like home. It is the alpha in my journey of reading fantasy novels, and the characters' journey throughout this entire trilogy have made them so real in my mind. And the Sandra Lance within this trilogy are some of the best ones that I've read so far from him, especially the one in the Hero of Ages. When I read the final few chapters of the Hero of Ages, I, I was shocked, I was astounded, I was amazed. I just sat and thought to myself, what did I just read? That was amazing, I need to experience more of this while I was staring at this exact wall. I think that's pretty much it for me today. I absolutely love this trilogy. That's an understatement, I know, but well, that's the best way to capture what I feel about this trilogy. Sum things up, the reason why you should read the Bispawn trilogy is you love compelling storyline with plot twists accompanied with hints that is hidden right in front of your eyes. And then you love character's development that grew gradually throughout the entire trilogy. And I think it's also mandatory for you to actually love Heart Magic System. This Rune Trilogy is one of the series that really popularized uh, Heart Magic System in the entire fantasy genre, I think. Uh, hold on. What? What do you want? You want to appear in the video? Also, if you love Animal Companion just like this boy, then I think you're going to love Miss Bone Trilogy. Right, Choco? And lastly, if you love an immersive world building, great action sequences, and satisfying conclusion, I think you should really try Miss Bond Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. It is one of my favorite trilogy of all time, and it is the most important series in my life. As always, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you think about this trilogy if you have read the book. If you haven't, I hope this video will convince you to try this trilogy. That's all from me today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.